These 50 stories present a snapshot of the incredibly diverse range of projects undertaken by York's thriving media arts community. It's a human sized city where people can actually really connect, but also we can radiate out right across the world. Very being has been powered by ideas and creativity and being a meeting place from across the world. It's about being able to support high-end creative work to fulfill people's visions. My name is Charles Cecil, I'm the Managing Director of Revolution Software. Our best known brand is, is Broken Sword. We recently produced an iPhone and iPad version of the game which was hugely successful. Um, recently I worked with BBC on Doctor Who. Uh, before that I worked with Ron Howard and his team on the game version of The Da Vinci Code. When I founded Revolution back in 1990, we could go anywhere in the country. And I chose York uh, and I'm really thrilled and delighted that I did that. York has a railway hub which allows us to collaborate with people very quickly. We have very, very fast broadband, which is incredibly valuable. It allows us to send data around the world uh, very, very effectively, very, very quickly. We have two very strong universities, which gives us the opportunity to interact with and indeed employ very, very bright students. York is the ideal place to, to set up a business, particularly in the creative arts. My name is Jill Cooper, I'm Head of Arts and Culture at the City of York Council. About 2003 um, we decided to introduce a 10-year lighting strategy to light up the historic buildings of the city, firstly because that would look beautiful for the residents but secondly also help us with our tourism trade. The first year was a huge success and since then we've been working with Illuminating York uh, both to highlight the beautiful heritage buildings that we have in the city but also to give the chance of local artists to work in the digital art and media sector, but also to learn from the best of the international artists that we invite across. It's not just a case of lighting the building beautifully as it would be all year round, but it's about the kind of transformation that their creativity brings to, to those buildings. One of the things I'm immensely proud of is that local artistic community has started to become international artists in their own right. My name is Abhay Adhikari and my business is called Dhyan Design. I've grown up in India and we used to have meditation on Fridays. And when I came to England, I wanted to see how can I bring that into schools in a secular way. So I created a, a mobile gaming device and using multimedia output, become aware of your breath and breathing and then take conscious control of it. My research was based at the Music Research Centre at the University of York. That means there was a lot of emphasis on the quality and nature of sound and that transferred into my research. I had access to some very talented people, whether it was the community musician from Japan or the sound designer from Poland, to create my device, evaluate it and apply it. I'm Marcus Roman, I'm the Artistic Director of Pilot Theatre, which is based here in the city of York. I attended TED, which is the Technology Entertainment Design Conference back in uh, the States in 2007, and on returning from that, I wanted to do something similar over here in York, and we set up the Shift Happens Conference to bring people who are creating things and working at the edge of their ability on arts and learning and technology. And as part of that project, we're also going to be setting up TEDx York, and we're running that in 2011, right the way through over the next four years, and it's a great opportunity for us to highlight some of the specialisms that we've got in terms of media, in terms of information, in terms of education. Of course, in a digitised world, boundaries and borders are increasingly more and more meaningless. But what the strength of this city has is it's always run networks. It used to be the head of the Roman Empire. It then used to run the railways. And now with the infrastructure we have in terms of fibre and connectivity, it means we can reach globally. And that's the real power of this particular sized city. It's a human sized city where people can actually reach and really connect, but also we can radiate out right across the world. I'm Kit Monkman and I'm one half of KMA Creative Technology. The first really large scale work we did was a piece called Flock, which we did in Trafalgar Square. And Flock is a sort of playful pedestrian version of Swan Lake and that received an enormous amount of media attention. And so most recently we did a piece called Congregation, um, which was chosen to represent the UK at the Shanghai World Expo, then moved to Tate Britain. I'm a great believer in the fact that contemporary work needs to be fueled by engagement with the past. The last thing I could possibly do, I think, is work in an environment where everything was modern. And I think one of the extraordinary things about York is that you have within this very compact city this most extraordinary sense of history. 
Um, and for me, that's a critical part in our developing as a society kind of these new technological tools to make art. York Explore is our flagship Explore Centre. Uh, Explore Centres are a partnership between libraries and adult and community education. We've been able to use the buildings that we have and the engagement that we have with local people to work with partners such as Arts and Culture and Adult and Community Education to create an open access community media centre in York Explore. We work with Chaos Media who are a, a group of young media volunteers. We've given them a base at York Explore and in return they help us in training our staff how to use the equipment and they also run workshops on things such as blogging, podcasting, web design, digital photography, getting older people in, talking to the younger people about digital media, helping them to understand it. I'm Chris Walker, Managing Director of Bright White Limited. The majority of what we do is in the uh, museum sector, so it's usually a sort of combination of usually multi-screen or multi-projection environments. As far as I'm aware, no one has used performance capture and motion capture in the, in the way that we're proposing to use it in Bannockburn to uh, orchestrate a very lifelike medieval battle. We're doing things that are impossible with film. I think York's a very forward-thinking place, especially in terms of interpretation and interpretation technique. The whole philosophy behind learning by doing and uh, by immersing people in these environments is very much part of our heritage, really, in York. The University of York recognised the importance of creative industries within England and within the Yorkshire region and as part of that established a new department of theatre, film and television in 2007. Our new building on the Heslington East campus features a variety of commercial production spaces and post-production spaces. This includes a black box sound stage, two broadcast quality television studios, and post-production facilities on par with Soho. And also, we have a screening theater that is full 2K digital cinema, which is unique in the region. The university has committed over 40 million pounds to this building and this department, so there's a substantial commitment to promoting the arts and making York a center of excellence for the media arts. This isn't about technology, this isn't about toys or tools, it's about being able to support high-end creative work to fulfill people's visions. All the ingredients are coming together to drive economic growth through the use of ideas, innovation and creativity. And this UNESCO bid will just help us make the step change into the next stage of our growth and exporting the best of York into the world's marketplaces. It's an interesting creative city. It has already changed beyond recognition over the last 20, 30 years and will change again. We are keen to build on York's history of innovation and creativity to create jobs for local people. At one point, someone said, look, we're going to build a really big church. And everyone, yeah, we'll buy into that. As over six generations, they kind of built this thing over 200 years. And then we got this thing. It's a colossally big vision. And some of the questions we have now is, well, what are the visions we're putting down that really make us go, we're going to do something that's going to have a really long-lasting impact for the future? This particular bit is exactly that. We should be saying, this isn't just for now or the next five or ten years. This is for the next six generations. And this city has always actually thought big and this is one reason that it needs to do that now.